don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today Hey everyone, Connie here and welcome to my blind reaction to Higarashi no Naku Koroni Go episode 7 so yeah, we're currently in this loop um, meeting Shion Sonazaki, um, the twin sister of Mion, who we've known since the beginning. And so far we haven't gotten any of the um, spooky stuff with this loop yet. Um, it's mostly been centered around getting to know Shion and Keiichi specifically, uh, just the growing relationship with her and to a lesser degree with Mion. Um, <laughs> Ignore the dog. <laughs> Male person came. Just, yeah, wrong timing on that. Um, but yeah, it's been all about that. And Sion, for most of the time we've seen her, has been a lot more standardly cutesy and nice and everything compared to Mion, who's more of a joker and likes to have fun and prank and mess with people, especially Keiichi. Um, but yeah, we, we've seen a different side to her when Keiichi was being attacked by these motorcycle thugs. At that point, she saved him, and we saw like a very serious, very intense side of her. And everybody in Hinamazawa that was nearby was, was standing up to them as well, but it was like a complete 180 shift on her personality. Um, which also shifted right back after the police, and Oishi specifically, arrived. So, yeah, there's that. Um, but yeah, we got um, a lot of thoughts from Keiichi, it seemed, that he he was thinking that Shion and Mion were the same person that was like a split personality or just like Mion was playing a trick on him. So when he actually saw them side by side, when they went to the shop and saw Mion there, um, he was legitimately surprised that there were two of them. <laughs> Which it's like, I, I guess I understand with the way Mion has been towards him, like the pranking and messing with him and everything, but... At the same time, it's like, there was really no big reason to think that. There was really no, like, major reason to just assume that. Especially since because of how different they are. Like, he's never seen Mion act that way. So it's like, why do you automatically assume she is now? I don't know. Just to mess with you, you think she's gonna just pull it that easily? I don't know. But anyway... So, yeah, nothing has really started yet in this loop, like it, uh, like with last loop. Last loop, we had stuff being sprinkled throughout a lot, uh, a lot quicker, and the only real spooky stuff we've had in this one is the mentions of the murders and whatnot, uh, which we also talked about in the first loop as well. So it's not even new, we're just getting new perspective and some new information. Um, last we left off, though, uh, Keiichi and Shion were about to check inside the Furude family's, um, it would it be counted as a shed or, like, a shrine or something? Either way, it was locked. Uh, Tomitake and Takano broke into it, um, because they wanted to see what was inside. Shion believes she knows what's inside, but wants to actually see it for herself. And they've all convinced Keiichi to look as well, even though this is extremely wrong to do. Like, no matter how you look at it, this is extremely wrong. Because they're not only breaking into this building that is owned by another family in town, but, like, there's so many things wrong with that. Not just the breaking and entering, but... The, the betrayal of trust, the fact that they roped in someone else to do it with them against his will and better judgment. Just, uh, it's bothersome, but it should be. I mean, fair enough. 
Um, so yeah, we're going to get into this episode and, uh, well, see how this uh, takes us. Um, I don't know if there's going to be much divergence from the original. And again, I don't remember all the details from the original, so I don't remember all the details about this loop. But I do like this loop, so we'll see if it uh, continues to... <clears throat> excuse me. We'll see if it continues to be my fa one of my favorites going forward in this uh, series. So, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. Okay, and we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, inside the storehouse, they found a shrine to Oyashiro-sama, and some tools that the purpose of which isn't fully explained like the legend and everything about uh how all of this started with the village and everything and oyashira sama kind of posits that they're tools for killing and cooking humans to eat um with the entire demon blood and everything that the legend uh, discussed. But that is just a legend. And it's hard to say, like, how you, whether or not you should believe it's real. Now, in reality, it's like they're just tools and everything. So it's, not much to it um now there's a few questions that come in with this episode one of the big ones is what did takano take from the sore house you know she took something uh the fact that it was brought up it didn't need to be brought up if she didn't take anything there was literally no point in bringing it up unless they wanted to trick us so either they're tricking us and making us believe that she took something or she took something, which is honestly, I feel more likely. Um, now, after that, at some point after they split up from Shion and um, Keiichi, they stole a festival truck and left the village. And according to Rika, they are dead. Though we don't know any of the details on how they're dead. Like, what happened to them? Did they get in a car accident they run off a cliff we don't know uh well i guess that would still count as a car accident um but we have no idea all we know is that rika who is the one kind of connecting piece to all of this she's the one who's going through all of these loops with full memories of it all um which was already kind of shown and discussed briefly in episode two um she if she says they're dead, it's very, like, you kind of have to believe they're dead. <laughs> um, also, sorry for the lighting. It's, like, just bright enough out there to, like, cast a lot of light on my face at the moment. Um, so they're dead somehow, but we don't know how. None of our friends are dead yet. Keiichi and his friends, none of them have died. Shion seems worried about it, but Rika mentions that Shion is alive and everything. So right now, no one from our group is dead. Uh, we have found out multiple things throughout this. We found out about the Sonazaki Yakuza family, which is a big deal. Um, kind of going with what I had said in the previous episode when I thought that all the people around uh, that were helping Shion intimidate the bikers. I, I thought they were the Sonazaki family. That's why I said you don't fuck with the Sonazakis. Um, but yeah, it's like, this is why. Um, this is the reason for that. The Sonazaki family is Yakuza. <laughs> um, so, so we're getting information on that. Um, we're seeing a lot of different uh, stuff come to light in this one. 
Um, but so far, the active killings haven't started. The active insanity that this that the original series is known for hasn't begun yet. So, even though Rika already admits that this loop is basically already hopeless, that it's over, that nothing can really be changed, we still haven't actually seen anything happen. So, what's going to happen? Leads you into wonder for next episode. Um, yeah, the, the story itself about the demons who were uh, just completely overwhelmed by Oishiro Sama's presence and agreed to live in harmony with the humans and they bred with them and the demon blood got mixed in with all the humans of Hinamazawa eventually and that they had to take sacrifices according to Oyashiro Sama's uh, discernment from other villages in order to feed because they were people eating demons. It's like, it's so like ridiculous legend. It's just like such a ridiculous legend that you don't believe it. You have no reason to believe it. Nothing about it seems reasonable at all. So you just automatically don't even think much of it. You just think, oh, it's a spooky legend. Cool. Keiichi believed it really quickly. And... Just like he believed about the curse and everything, and ha because everyone was asking him about Tomitaki and Takano, and he believed that they were next and was freaking out and, yet, and getting angry at Shion for forcing him to go in there. And it's like, he is very easily swayed. Like, I I I've seen characters in various shows be swayed by various things, uh, whether it be money, power, uh, love, all kinds of things. Um, or even just being swayed by friends and family into doing stuff that they don't want to do. I've seen that before, too. In plenty of shows, plenty of movies, plenty of games, yada, yada, yada. But rarely do I see a character who's so fucking easily swayed, not only into doing things against his will, but into believing anything and everything. Like, there was literally no reason for him to get that invested in that, that believing in that legend. He, he had no reason to believe in the legend as hard as he did. To where he got legit, that legitimately scared and just set off by it. There was no reason for him to believe in the Curse of, Oya, Curse of Oya Shirasama so heavily to the point where he's screaming and yelling and acting the way he is at the end, uh, well, near the end when he's yelling at Shion on the phone. There's no reason for that. It's just like... <laughs> he's... It's, it's ridiculous. It is so blatantly ridiculous. Now... From my memory from the original series, again, it's been a while since I've seen it, um, I do remember the head of the statue falling and already being broken. I, I do very much remember that. I do not remember. I do not remember if the thing with Rika happened in this loop, in, in the original series. I just, I do not remember if that happened in the original series. Um, because honestly, with what Rika said and everything, I mean, yes, in the original series, it wasn't her first time through these loops either, but it, it just very much works for the setup we've got from episode two, where this is all happening again. It very much works as kind of with what is going on with the concept of that, that this is that the loops have restarted for some unknown reason. Now, because of the loops having restarted from some unknown reason, I assume the final conclusion, the final like cause of that is not going to be the same. I, I won't mention what the cause was in the original one, but I, I assume that the cause is not going to be the same as in the original just because this is a sequel. This is the loops happening again. It's not 
it's not a reboot of the first one. It's literally continuing. It's a continuation. So I assume the, the exact reasoning is not going to be the same because it really, I don't think, can be. So <coughs> the question is, how did this start again? Why did this start again? That's what we're going to have to figure out. And so I think at some point, I don't know when, but at some point the series is going to diverge. Because I think right now it's pretty much the same as the original for the most part, with a couple exceptions here and there. Um, just, you know, because of the continuation and everything with uh, showing in the second episode. Uh, Rika's crazy eyes and shit. Maybe the scene with Rika in this episode. Um, but it's like, a lot of it's the same. And in fact, I'd say most of it's the same. It's the same loops, that's why. So I think that at some point it's going to diverge and do so in a notable way. I might be wrong about that, but that would make sense to me. Because again, with this being proven by the second episode to be a continuation, just doing exactly the same all the way through wouldn't really make a lot of sense. So they've got to change it at some point. So I'm interested to see what they do with that. Um, I still imagine we're going to get a lot of the same stuff, and we're probably going to get a lot of the same even death scenes and stuff. But I'm excited to see what they do new with this more than anything. Um, because I love the original, but I want to see the new stuff. I want to see things that make me wonder, okay, what's going to happen now? That's why I started reacting to this instead of watching this on my own time with uh, other people's reactions. That was what I was originally doing, remember. I only decided to pick this up after seeing the first couple minutes, or the first like minute or so, or whatever, 30 seconds, I don't know, of episode two, when I found out that it wasn't just a reboot. That's the entire reason I started reacting to it, because if it was just a reboot, even if it's a good reboot, which it very much is, um, it, it very, it, it, like, take all that stuff out, it would be still a very good reboot. Um, and, um, even with that, though, it's like, I, I probably wouldn't want to react to it. I'd be fine watching it on my own time, but yeah. Um, but with the fact that it is bringing in some new elements, that's what I want to see. That's why I'm reacting to it. That is literally the point of me reacting to it, rather than watching it on my own. So hopefully we get more of that uh, sprinkled through, and eventually, hopefully, it just diverges off. Kind of like, um, uh, no, that's not even a fully great example. I was going to say kind of like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, but the beginnings of the original Full Metal Alchemist and Brotherhood are actually different as well. Because the original series goes more into depth with certain things, so while Brotherhood kind of skims through them. Um, at the beginning until it, like, gets to that divergence point. Um, but still, you, you get the idea. Um, overall, this episode was very enjoyable, very good, and we're definitely starting to get to the creepier stuff, starting to get to the more intense stuff that, as I mentioned in the pre-thoughts, we haven't gotten to in this loop yet. So that's appreciated. Um... But I'm very interested to see, like I said, what new stuff they do and just how they can make this, e even the older stuff, really work in a new, fresh way. Um, giving Rika the creepy eyes is definitely uh, definitely one of them. And, and the original Higurashi was already known for its creepy-ass faces and expressions and whatnot. Um, it, it was, it's kind of like a, a joke uh, of the Higurashi face. So, yeah. Either way, uh, tell me in the comments below what you thought of this episode of Higurashi no Naku Koro ni Go, and thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.